you hear there is interference. There's a transmitter out there that's uh, stuck open. And it's effectively jamming the Sheriff's Department's radio system. So their dispatch center could get out just fine because they could overpower the interference. But depending on the field units out there, they could, they're being jammed out. The interference is overpowering their signal and locking them out. If they were using handhelds, forget it. You're never going to get access to their repeater. So they kind of reached out to us here to sort of try to see if we could locate it after they determined that it wasn't this site here that was causing the interference. So uh, what we got to do is uh, triangulate the source of the signal and kill it. And this is what the hams use is instead of hooking it up to a visual display here, they'll hook it up to an HT like this VX7R. So that could actually tune into it and set the squelch level really sensitive so where if I point my antenna this way I get let, uh, a lot of static from, from the squelch or it will be squelched out. So as soon as I get hotter and hotter and hotter that signal will, will get clearer and clearer and clearer effectively sort of showing me the direction using this device right here and this VX7R has a built-in sort of bar graph spectrum analyzer already built into this so another reason for me to stick to this device here because instead of listening I can listen to both the static and the visual representation of the signal like right there somebody's transmitting on that channel or close to it and it pegged out check that out I'm on a hilltop here so there's a lot of noise and radiation up here and everything so this is not a, a good it's a starting point for the other equipment but not for this guy here this guy is just too sensitive okay let's go hunting I'm down the hill a little bit and the repeater site is way up there but there's a lot of uh, noise up there a lot of hilltop radiation going on there that's a bad place to start as far as uh, looking for uh, uh, a jamming signal hey and by the way I'm gonna mix this sort of scenario this is a true scenario these guys are being jammed the sheriff's department around here with uh, locating you know people around your neighbor uh, your area as far as where they're located or the direction of their uh, transmission site if, if this is the extreme case of uh, societal collapse this method could be used the same way to find out the general location of where those other parties are at if you're scanning your particular neighborhood and it doesn't have to be all what you call it a uh, high-tech like this stuff right here if you have it hey more power to you but I'm doing it the ham way here and here's uh, the VX7R I don't know if you could pick that out so I'm just going to scan I got a a good strong signal from a sc my scanner here of that signal and as I point to that location there you see the number one come up on that little blip there right there that's my interference signal and this Yagi is pointing right towards that location there so I'm gonna move to the left you can see it got colder lost my signal there it is it came back again gonna move it to the right I lost it I'm gonna go back to where my strongest point up was around right here right in that direction towards the valley floor so I'll take my compass shoot a bearing and plot it on my map I use my location here as the starting point of the bearing and from that location on the map hit a hit, hit the bearing and mark my line on the map. I'm going to use topographical uh, software on my laptop which is easier but you could do this with paper as well. So I got a couple of bearings already. Hilltop and here but these are not too great because they're pretty much in line with each other but this is my best bet here to start with because I got a a verified sort of uh, bearing here with no influences from the mountaintop uh, on top. 
So I'm going to pick another location to see if I could get a, a cross section bearing and that will get me in the ballpark of where this thing is. Right there is where I came from, right this hill right here. And that's where our repeater is at, the sheriff's repeater system. So uh, I took a bearing from there and it was pointing towards the valley over here. Now I'm quite a bit away from there and I'm taking another bearing and it's pointing me towards that location over there. So I'll just jot that down on the map, put the bearing on there and see where the lines can cross. It looks like it's across the valley wherever the signal is coming from. So it's going to be uh, a little bit of a trek. Breaking out the big guns. Alright, I'm on the west side of the valley. And the direction finding, the ham radio with the Yagi antenna, the, the uh, amateur way of uh, fox hunting, is telling me that the signal is that way. Do, I would say a little bit northeast, I'm on the west side. Of the and I was just on top of that radio site up there for a higher elevation and then some other spots you know on, on the drive down that overlook the valley behind me a little bit it all points to that location there I took like four uh, uh, I took four bearing points uh, when, when I got a signal strangely enough and this is the first time that I've encountered this well not really I had this uh, quite a few years ago too. Uh, I could only see the signal if I'm high up in elevation, at least 2,000 feet. That up there is around 2,000 something, I forgot what. But uh, that's the only time I could really see the, uh, the signal on the, on the uh, equipment. When I get down in the valley, it's gone completely, which makes it really tricky for me to search. So I have to hit the high points uh, to, to, to sniff out those signals. Okay, this signal is really elusive coming from the valley there, I'm searching in the valley. So I have to hit the high points there to triangulate this signal. Uh, like I said, it's the opposite of uh, normal convention. What comes up must come down, but with radio, what goes down must come up. That's why I'm on a high point here. And I'm on another hilltop there. That mountain there is the uh, repeater site that uh, we first started off with. So from there I shot at Nazmiths down into the valley. That's where the source has uh, showed me where that signal is. Now I'm um, about, I don't know, maybe five to eight miles north of that site over there. And I'm on another hilltop here. And look at here, another lookout. I love lookouts. But uh, here I have another good vantage point. I think it's 4,000 feet up high here. I'll annotate the correct elevation. But I'm looking down into the valley here, as you can see there. And the Yagi is pointing to where that interference is. And you can hear that interference of my little Yesu there. Let me shut this guy down. So right there is pointing to where the the source of the interference is way up there and look at the setup this setup here is a man packable amateur radio fox hunter they do this for fun they set out a little transmitter out there in the field somewhere and then they set out teams that want to participate in fox hunting this particular errant signal so they all get in their vehicles or on foot or whatever and they do exactly what I'm doing right here They'll use a Yagi antenna. This antenna here that looks like a TV, old style TV antenna, is a directional antenna. So I call this the bazooka of, of antennas. The main force is going out that way. 
and there's no force coming out towards the side and there's a little bit of backblast that comes behind you so if you're looking at a signal if you got the strongest signal going this way or you think is the strongest signal sometimes I do a 180 degree turn to see what my backblast area looks like if it's if it's weaker than my my business end heading that way then I know my direction is this way. Sometimes you can get reversed. If you're too close to the signal, sometimes you can't even tell where's your front or your back. But since I'm far away from the signal, supposedly, it's on the east side, west side of the valley over there, uh, I could dif differentiate between the, the, where the source is coming from. And like I said, this is a field man packable direction finding equipment the cheapest rig that you could do you could just use your ham radio wooks on or those Chinese other thingies and just listen to the static so I'm gonna turn this guy back on and I think I lost my signal it comes on and off it transmits then it goes away then it comes back and it goes away now where last week it was on constantly so it's a, it's a game of cat and mouse and uh, if you're searching for a party that's out there you know in in the field and you're trying to locate where their direction is that's what you gotta do you just gotta go on an observation post somewhere sit down and wait until they start talking and then you could try to triangulate where the source of their signal is that's all you got to do and realistically when you're looking for an active channel that is how you do it because they're not going to be transmitting all the time like right now it's gone the signal is gone um, uh, I'm in the blind now I don't know where they're at luckily I got my bearing already so I know they're this way but uh, if I was actively looking for a bearing right now I would have to wait until they start talking again and that could be what five minutes later an hour later or two weeks later and it has happened uh, I haven't gone out to look for an active malicious user out there but most of my searching was errant interference like in this case here a stuck transmitter that is not locked on frequency throughout the day here as it gets warmer that frequency is going to creep lower and lower in frequency and then as it gets colder again it's going to creep right back up again uh, higher and higher in frequency so it's not only taking out the local sheriff's department here it's actually taking out a whole host of other radios out there jamming other frequencies out there so uh, I'm surprised that nobody has uh, gone this length yet maybe they don't know what they're looking at or how to diagnose that particular problem but uh, I've had experience with this in the past in the professional area not as an amateur but uh, uh, that's how you do it and like I said the, the uh, amateur radio uh, operators out there they do this as a hobby to hone in their skills in this particular uh, area if they have an unauthorized user out there they're just gonna foam at the mouth like a pack of hunting dogs and go out there and, and find this little fox out there that's causing all sorts of havoc and it's quite satisfying when you find him especially when he's taunting you and, and saying that oh you can't find me but uh hey when you have I'm, I'm doing this solo today so it's kinda hard I'm bouncing from mountaintop to that mountaintop to this one and across the valley just to get a ballpark figure where the lines are going to intersect triangulate to go and search for this guy on the prepper side of the house uh, which I like to direct my content with you know relating everything to sort of prepping uh, uh, preparedness and all that good stuff survivalism this is a technique that could be useful uh, in detecting where the direction of a party that's using radios are using also evading detection I'm not gonna talk about evading detection you just gotta look at this video and put two and two together and come up with your own strategy but uh, there is a lot of clues in this video that would sort of give you a uh, an idea of what to do
I'm not going to go into it because uh, I think that's kind of harmful for, uh, you know, in this day and age now where, where uh, people like me need to know where you're at <laughs> or, or other agencies and stuff like that. So I'm not going to give you any techniques, but I'm going to show you the process. So this is the, the basic setup that you would need to look for this signal right here. Okay, listen to the static. Let's listen to the noise. I'm going to go ahead and turn this up so you can hear. Got clearer. It went away. It's getting worse. Signal came back. It's getting stronger. Stronger and clearer. Stronger and clearer. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm losing it there. So let's check out my back blast. It's weaker than my front blast there, my business end. So I gotta turn 180 degrees over in the other direction. And there it got super, uh, there it got clearer again. And on the VX7R, there's a feature on there called Spectrum Analyzer. And you'll see like a little blip on the middle there. It's like a, you see, see all those lines there? It's getting stronger and stronger on the on the screen there. I got the volume down, but this will show the uh, intensity of the signal that you're pointing to, or that the receiver on this radio is uh, is detecting. So that'll give me an indication how strong the signal is, or or if it's getting stronger or weaker. Not relying on hearing the static, because that could be deceptive as well. So that's another reason why I like the VX7R as my all-around kick-ass field radio. Because uh, of that function, and you can see how powerful this function can be when you're given a mission of looking for a uh, signal. Sometimes I can't take the truck into places where I have to sort of, you know, search for this. So I could get on foot for a little bit and go, well, I don't know, maybe a mile into a, a good vantage point and do exactly what I'm doing now. Now this is the next step higher in, in equipment as far as looking for this signal there. And uh, I'll put some footage in uh, as this in operation. I'm, I'm panning the, uh, the waves here. And uh, on this service monitor here, it's got the function of a spectrum analyzer on the screen there. So you'll visually see the signal getting stronger or weaker, stronger or weaker. And using the uh, Yagi antenna, I could point in, in to the source of that signal using this equipment. Uh, I don't have the DC adapter to hook up to the car battery, so I brought out the uh, generator to power this unit up. And this was my backup to the ne next piece of equipment that, that uh, I was using. So this is more like a uh, your group comm unit leader or group technician or someone like me, a field telecom technician out there doing this. And uh, this takes a while for you to look at a signal. You need to be up here in the hills to, to look at the signal and, and to triangulate. Same with the, uh, same with the uh, handheld over there. So the next level above this would be the actual direction finding equipment that you know all those movies that you see as far as you know there he is you know go get him and all that good stuff and that is this piece of equipment right here 